The Life of Nico Robin, One Piece. Nico Robin, also known by her epithet, Devil Child and The Light of the Revolution, is the archaeologist of the Straw Hat Pirates and one of the nine senior officers of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. She is the seventh member of the crew and the sixth to join, doing so at the end of the Arabasta arc. She temporarily left the crew during the Water 7 arc but rejoined during the Emmy's Lobby arc. Robin ate the Hanahana no Mi at a young age, giving her the power to reproduce her body parts, or her entire body, on any surface at will. As the sole survivor of the destroyed West Blue Island O'Hara, she is currently one of the only two people in the world known to have the ability to read and decipher poneglyphs, a skill which is considered forbidden and threatening to the world government. She acted as the vice president of the Baroque Works as Miss All Sunday, serving and partnering herself directly with the organization's president, the ex-warlord Crocodile, who operated under the codename Mr. Zero. She was a secondary antagonist of the Arabasta Saga before joining the Straw Hats. Her dream is to find the Rio Poneglyph, which tells the true history of the world, specifically the Void Century. She gained a bounty of 79 million at the age of 8 due to her ability to read poneglyphs after the destruction of O'Hara. It later increased to 80 million after the Straw Hats invaded Eni's lobby to rescue her and escape, and to 130 million after the Dress Rosa arc. Currently, following the events from Raid on Onigashima, her bounty is raised to 930 million. Welcome to the Imagi! In today's video, we're going over the life of Nico Robin. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Early Life Nico Robin was born on the island of O'Hara and came from a family of archaeologists. Her mother, Nico Olvia, went out to sea to find the true history when Robin was two years old, leaving her in the care of Olvia's brother and his wife, Roji. While Robin's father was never revealed, Olvia stated that she will honor her husband's dream. She then left to study the poneglyphs. Robin later wandered into the Tree of Knowledge and was allowed to read the books held within on Clover's invitation. Roji both verbally and physically abused Robin over menial actions. Roji made it obvious time and time again that Robin was not wanted. She was expected to keep out of sight and she was not allowed to participate in family celebrations. The powers of her devil fruit often freaked out or scared the other children. On top of that, often she would overhear the conversations of parents telling their children to avoid her at all costs, as well as other children calling her a demon. Her only friends were the scholars at the Tree of Knowledge, with Professor Clover of the Archaeology Lab, a friend of her mother, trying to take care of her. At only eight years old, she aced an archaeology exam and was officially inducted as a scholar. However, when she announced that she, like her mother, wanted to find out the true, unrecorded history of the world, she was reproved by Clover, who told her she would get banned from the library if she continued to spy on the other scholars. Robin ran off crying and headed to the northwest beach of O'Hara, where she met the giant, Jaguar D. Saul, who was washed up on the shore. The two became friends, and Robin continued to visit him for the following four days while he built his raft. After Saul found out he was on O'Hara and figured out that Robin was Olvia's daughter, he informed Robin about the battleships that were on their way to destroy O'Hara due to the scholars studying the poneglyph. Nico Olvia had recently escaped off a marine ship and returned to O'Hara due to Saul's efforts. She informed the archaeologists that her colleagues had been killed by the marines. She told them that the marines were able to infer that O'Hara was their homeland based on the items they possessed on the ship and they were headed towards O'Hara, likely to kill them. The archaeologists, however, refused to leave. They wished to continue to protect the tree and the knowledge they had worked so hard to research and procure. When Olvia was warned that CP9 was on shore, she rushed out of the Tree of Knowledge, running past her daughter without notice. Robin arrived at the Tree of Knowledge and asked Clover about her mother's whereabouts. As a wanted woman, Olvia wished to cut all ties with her daughter so that Robin might not be associated with a criminal mother. Doing as Olvia wanted, Clover denied that Robin's mother was on the island, but Robin seemed skeptical. 
Clover quickly changed the topic and urged Robin to leave, and not to mention that she's an archaeologist, or she might be arrested too. Robin refused, and CP9 bust into the Tree of Knowledge and began searching for the Poneglyphs. Outside, agents warned the island's residents to move to the evacuation boat or be destroyed. Olvia confronted Spandine, the director of CP9 at the time, but was quickly subdued by the brute force of his agents. Back at the Tree of Knowledge, all of the archaeologists were arrested and taken outside the tree, and once again, Clover urged Robin to escape, but she refused once again. Spandine and the rest of CP9 arrived with a gravely wounded Olvia, who instantly recognized her daughter once her name is spoken. CP9 found the Poneglyph in the basement of the tree, and Spandine sentenced the archaeologist to death by Buster Call. However, Clover began to speak out, talking to the five elders via Spandine's Den Den Mushi, stating his theory on why the government really wanted to keep the Void Century a secret. However, before Clover could reveal the name of the civilization he spoke of, he was shot point-blank and mortally wounded. Seeing that the battleships had already arrived, Saul rushed off to find Robin. As the attack on O'Hara began, it was discovered that Robin also had the capacity to read poneglyphs. As the bombardment began, Spandine and the CP9 made their exit. Robin and Olvia reunited, and shortly afterwards, Saul arrived. It was then revealed that Saul was a former vice admiral and aided Nika Olvia with her escape. Olvia asked Saul to make sure that her daughter was taken safely off the island and told Robin that she must continue to live. Robin begged to stay with her mother, but Olvia insisted on staying as there was something more that she had to do. Saul followed Olvia's wish and managed to reach the island's shore. But the marine ship spotted him and opened fire. Seeing as he was carrying Robin, Saul put her down and retaliated in anger for almost hurting Robin and destroyed several ships. Robin tried to make for the evacuation ship, but trying to use her Hanahana abilities to get aboard frightened the people on board. Plus, Spandine told them not to let her on since she claimed she's an archaeologist, though this would be fortunate for Robin. Saul noticed Spandine and charged towards his ship for his foolishness, but Vice Admiral Kuzan, later known as Admiral Aokiji, prevented him from getting that far, challenging him. The evacuation ship was destroyed by another Vice Admiral, Sakazuki, who did it as a precaution if any archaeologist had snuck aboard. This act disgusted both Saul and even Kuzan. Saul tried to get away with Robin, but he was frozen by Kuzan's ice power. Before being completely encased, Saul encouraged Robin to escape in that her friends were out in the ocean waiting for her. His last act was to laugh as he's frozen, sticking to his philosophy to laugh from his heart even in the bad times, as most of the bearers of D did when they met their demise. Back at the Tree of Knowledge, Olvia, Clover, and the other scholars had tossed out as many books into the ocean as they could, so future generations could find them. They then realized there was nothing more they could do, and stood in the tree as it burned around them. Olvia apologized to Robin for not leaving any parting words as a mother. Robin ran to the raft that Salt built, only to be met by Kuzan. He told her that he was letting Robin go, since he was curious as to why Saul risked his life for her. However, Kuzan warned her that he will be the first to come after Robin if she tried anything. Robin then left on a boat guided by an ice path Kuzan set for her. Remembering Saul's words, she tried to laugh, but wept as O'Hara was burned to the ground, which left her as the only survivor. 20 Years on the Run Robin was found by a ship heading northwest of West Blue, and when she boarded it, somehow her bounty picture was taken. Spandine angrily explained to Sengoku that he tried to follow her, but his ship was caught on ice. For the world government to capture her, he suggested putting a bounty on her head and sent marines and agents to hunt her down, spreading the lie that she sank six ships to cover up the truth. The world government labeled her the Demon of O'Hara. They lied to the public that the scholars in O'Hara were trying to find the ancient weapons to destroy the world, which was not what the scholars were actually trying to do. Out of paranoia of what would become of her, the world government led word out that she posed a threat, and soon the world was brainwashed into thinking that Robin was trying to destroy the world. This negative gossip spread around the world, creating a half-truth myth. Terms like Devil Woman were born along with the belief that her very existence is a sin and considered her a terror. Robin's innocent life was ruined, and she grew up hating the government for the crimes they committed against her. Robin went to different people as the 20 years passed, all of whom tried to turn her in or kill her. 
Robin first encountered such attempts when she was taken in by an old farm lady, whom she worked for and thought was kind. One night, the old farm lady told Robin that before they could eat, she had visitors. The visitors turned out to be the world government agents attempting to kill her. The old farm lady was last seen yelling at the agents, Now give me the money! I turned her in for you! As she pulls the agents' clothes in anger. Next, Robin was then taken in by a couple, whom she had once again worked hard for. During the night, she overheard the people talking about turning Robin in. And after that, Robin fled. After that, they angrily called Robin an unfortunate woman who betrayed their kindness. She joined her first pirate crew at age eight. However, after the world government caught up with her new crew, they assumed she had betrayed them. She fled before the pirates turned their anger against her. They even threw curses at her, calling her trouble. After that, Robin would often sit on a rock in pouring rain as a dog came to her begging for food. Robin apologized and said, Dere shishi for the last time. Robin then tried to help out in a shop, but the owner whacked her with a stick in anger, telling her that she was not allowed in. When she turned 16 years old, Robin joined an unknown organization, but it wasn't long before she betrayed the organization. At age 23, she somehow entered the Grand Line from the West Blue through the Red Line where Mary Joaz is located. Then at age 24, she traveled to Arabasta where she met the Warlord of the Sea, Crocodile, who needed her ability to read Poneglyphs in order to locate the ancient weapon, Pluton, which is believed to be hidden somewhere in the country, and allowed her to join the Baroque Works organization. While employed in the organization, she managed to stay on long term, safely hiding away from the world government for four years. Whiskey Peak Arc Robin first appeared as Miss All Sunday Agent and Vice President of the Baroque Works organization at the end of the Whiskey Peak Arc. She was responsible for blowing up Igarum's decoy ship, though Igarum survived, which apparently was her intention. She met the Straw Hat Pirates and, after cryptically playing with them for a bit, offered them at eternal pose on Nanimonai Island. Luffy broke it instead, saying that he would not allow her to decide their destination. Princess Vivi revealed that it was Miss All Sunday who allowed her to discover the identity of Baroque Works president, Crocodile. Arabasta Arc Miss All Sunday made the necessary arrangements in order to organize the meeting between the remaining officer agents and the boss of the criminal organization, Crocodile. Finally, the officer agents of the Baroque Works met up with Miss All Sunday and Crocodile in the basement of the Rain Dinners Casino, owned by Crocodile. They were told the goal of the Baroque Works, their final mission, and their respective parts in overthrowing Arabasta. They were interrupted by Mr. Three, who told them that the Straw Hats and Vivi had escaped him during their time in Little Garden. He asked Crocodile for forgiveness, but is fed to his pet Banana Wani, huge crocodiles with banana-shaped growths on their heads, instead. The officer agents all got pictures of Vivi and the Straw Hat crew, excluding Sanji, with the help of Bon Cure's abilities, and were given the order to hunt them down, excluding Chopper as Crocodile believed he was the Straw Hat's pet. Later, Vivi was surrounded by billions, but was saved by Pell, a guard of the king who flew to Rainbase after Karu's arrival in order to scout. Pell, however, was defeated by Miss All Sunday, and Vivi was taken to the Rain Dinner's basement. There, Crocodile told her his plan to overthrow Arabasta while it was being executed. Luffy, Nami, Usopp, Zoro, and Smoker all arrived at Rain Dinner's, but they were all caught by a trap and thrown in a sea stone cage by Crocodile. Later in the desert, during a battle against Luffy, Crocodile created a sandstorm and sent it off to Yuba, where Toto was, and explained that he was the one who was sending storms there every day. Luffy yelled for him to stop it, but Crocodile impaled him with his hook during his distress. Then when he saw that Luffy was still alive, he left him in quicksand to die. Luckily, Luffy was saved by Miss All Sunday after Crocodile's departure and left Luffy in the hands of Pell telling Pell that Luffy was responsible for the safe return of Vivi. After the Baroque Works officer agents are defeated at the hands of the Straw Hat Pirates, Vivi arrived at the palace. The war had already started. Vivi ordered the royal army to blow up the palace in order to get everyone's attention, but was stopped by Crocodile. The army, realizing what was happening, tried to enter the palace, but they were stopped by Miss All Sunday. Koza also arrived at the scene, intending to demand Cobra's surrender only to find out the truth of the situation. 
Crocodile revealed that he's going to blow up the palace plaza, soon to be the center point of battle, with a massive and powerful bomb. He also revealed his true intentions, to find the location of the secret ancient weapon Pluton, which is said to be buried in Arabasta. Koza wanted to warn the city, but is stopped by Vivi, who stated that it will create a panic. The royal army raised a white flag, with Koza in front, but he was shot down by a double agent in the royal army, provoking the rebels. A battle started on the palace plaza, and Vivi watched in horror. Crocodile proceeded to throw Vivi off the palace wall, but she was saved by Luffy who came in flying on Pell's back. Vivi met the rest of the straw hats on the foot of the wall and went to search for the bomb with them and Pell. Luffy challenged Crocodile for a second time, but now he was aware that water is Crocodile's weakness. While the fight continued, Miss All Sunday took the nails painfully out of Cobra's body and cuffed him with her powers to force the king to the location of Pluton. Meanwhile, a furious crocodile recovered and ordered his partner to quickly depart. Miss All Sunday was confronted by marines led by Tashigi. Having a more than personal enmity against the marines than other pirates, she yelled at them to get out of her way. Tashigi demanded she release Cobra, but Miss All Sunday was not going to take orders from those who directly took orders from the world government. Tashigi is later informed by one of her men that Miss All Sunday was originally known as Nico Robin, who received a bounty of 79 million as a child because she was believed to have been responsible for the sinking of six warships. Visibly angered, Miss All Sunday easily dispatched the marine grunts and defeated Tashigi with her devil fruit ability. Miss All Sunday and King Cobra went in the hidden grave of the kings and found the Poneglyph. Crocodile soon arrived but did not get the information he wanted from the stone. He turned his back on Nico Robin and attacked her while she tried an assassination attempt on her own, but failed. Robin later gave the antidote to the poison in Crocodile's golden hook to Cobra, since Luffy was poisoned by it during his battle with Crocodile. After Cobra used it to save Luffy, Luffy managed to awaken long enough to grab Robin and Cobra and carried them out before the grave caved in. Shortly after the Straw Hat's departure from Arabasta, Robin made herself known, having hid herself on board of the Going Merry before their departure. Claiming that she wanted to join the crew since Luffy saved her when she lost her will to live and he should take responsibility. Luffy accepted her offer to join the crew, but the rest, excluding Sanji, were suspicious of her. However, she managed to quickly win everyone's favor except for Zoro, who remained wary of her. Jaya Arc Nami's log pose began pointing to the sky. After that, a big ship fell from the sky, and the crew found a map in the ship of an island named Skypea on a 200-year-old ship. They competed with the monkey-like Masira's salvage crew while they searched for more clues on how to get there. The Straw Hats decided to go to Jaya Island to look for information on Skypea, while Robin herself decided to temporarily part from the crew and search for clues on her own. It was implied that she may have gotten into some kind of confrontation while gathering information and used her powers to end the scuffle. The Straw Hats met with Mont Blanc Cricket on another part of Jaya. Cricket is a descendant of Mont Blanc Noland, an infamous liar who told of a gold city on Jaya, and Cricket was an outcast for looking for artifacts on the gold city. He might have been the only person who knows how to get to Skypea. Cricket explained how the Straw Hats can ride up a dangerous vertical current called the Knockup Stream to get to Skypea. However, they first had to catch a south bird to point them towards the location where the stream will erupt from the ocean. When Robin was able to catch sight of a south bird, she was able to quickly subdue it using her devil fruit powers. While the Straw Hats were looking for a south bird, Bellamy and his crew attacked Cricket's house and stole the gold artifacts he'd collected over the years from his salvage work. When the Straw Hats returned to see what happened, Luffy decided to take a side trip back to Mock Town. The Going Merry was later refitted by Masira and Shoujo to be flight capable, and the Straw Hats caught a ride on the knock-up stream for Skypea. Skypea Arc. They started entering the Gate of Heaven. First, they were recommended by an old woman to pay their ex toll, but even though they do not pay, the old woman lets them pass. As they were carried by a Sky Shrimp, they landed on a place that was surrounded by clouds. They met Conus, a Skypean. As they talked, the White Berets interrupted them and labeled them as a criminal of illegal entrance. As Zoro, Nami, Chopper, and Robin board the ship, a shrimp suddenly carried them to the sacrificial altar. Zoro, Nami, and Robin explored the land and they discovered it was a part of Jaya. 
They later came back to the Going Merry and were reunited with Luffy's group. That same evening, they discussed their plan of attack and had a feast with a bunch of local wolves. The next morning, Luffy's group set out to explore the island. When a giant snake attacked them, Robin, Luffy, Zoro, and Chopper are separated, and they all decided to go to the legendary city themselves hoping to meet each other there, although only Robin was going the right way. Robin defeated Yama, the chief of Enel's enforcers, angered by him destroying the ruins around her while trying to attack her, and said he should treasure history more carefully. While looking for the Poneglyph, she met Enel himself, and with a massive, powerful burst of lightning, he brought all the other combatants on Giant Jack crashing down to the city. With Nami, who was hiding, and Zoro as the only known survivors of the game, there were only six combatants that had survived. Luffy was swallowed by the giant snake during that time, in front of the master of the game. Enno eliminated Gon Fall when he defiantly denounced him as God. Robin herself was struck down by lightning after trying to trick Enel into believing that if he destroyed Upper Yard, the Golden Bell would never be found, having anticipated that she would have knowledge of where it was and would try to use it against him. When Luffy and the Shandia girl named Isa escaped the snake due to it being electrocuted by Enel, Robin regained consciousness and told Luffy and Isa of Enel's plan to destroy all of Skypea and gain the Golden Bell for himself. As Luffy charged towards the self-proclaimed god with Isa on Pierre to give his location, Robin mustered up what strength she had to get the defeated Straw Hats to higher ground on Giant Jack in case Enel began his attack. During the battle, Enel tricked Luffy and temporarily prevented him from interfering with his plan by grafting a giant sphere of gold onto his arm and removing him from the ship. Enel then used his flying ship, Maxim, to form thunderclouds over Skypea and commenced his plan by firing lightning bolts all over the land as it rises to search for the Golden Bell. Amazingly, Luffy returned to Giant Jack and asked Robin to take care of Isa, while he had unfinished business with Enel, charging up again. Eventually, with Nami's help, the Straw Hats knocked over Giant Jack for Luffy with Nami riding her waiver to gain up to him, as he jumped towards the massive thundercloud Enel created, the Raigo, and discharged the electricity within it causing it to explode and clear the sky. Luffy, with his final attack, knocked Enel through the Golden Bell and ended the war between the Skypeans and the Shandia, with the bell and Enel collapsing. After Luffy defeated Enel, Robin read the Poneglyph on the Golden Bell, learning about another ancient weapon, Poseidon, and sees Goldie Rogers writing in the ancient script on the bell. She then concludes that the Rio Poneglyph is on Laugh Tale, Seeing this, Robin became convinced that Luffy will be very important in the changing era of the world. Long Ring Long Land Arc Robin and company came across a mysterious pirate ship after trying to escape a giant wave. Soon, they arrived on an island inhabited by strange animals. The Going Merry was captured by the Foxy Pirates. After Tonjit reunited with his horse, they were soon attacked by Captain Foxy and his subordinates, who challenged Luffy to a Davy back fight a contest of pirates where the stakes were members of the crew. She teamed up with Nami and Usopp. With only Nami's and Porsche's boat remaining, it was an all-out war to the goal. But after Foxy exposes his devil fruit powers, Porsche won and took Tony Tony Chopper from Luffy. Then, the second round prepared to start. She, together with the other Straw Hats, watched on the sidelines as Sanji and Zoro played the ball game but were hampered by Foxy's blatant cheating and the crooked referee. But they managed to win, despite the constant cheating of the opposite team Luffy and Foxy faced off in the final game, a battle of brawn aboard Foxy's ship. The Straw Hat crew watched aside as Luffy continued to battle Foxy with the odds not in his favor, and the fight continued inside Foxy's ship. Luffy managed to finally defeat Foxy by using his own ability against him, after getting back his crew members, the Straw Hats left in search of a shipwright. After the Long Ring Long Land arc, she was confronted by Aokiji, one of three admirals. Aokiji frightened Robin as he revealed to the crew a little of her dark past, emphasizing that every organization she had joined had been wiped out, leaving her as the only survivor. She tried to retaliate and attack him with her power, but he remained unharmed because of the Hia Hia no Mi Logia's intangibility. The Admiral then froze Robin with his powers, and then tried to smash her frozen form, but she was taken away by her crew. She managed to survive after having the ice encasing melted with hot water by her crewmates. 
The incident, however, left Robin feeling very upset, as even her captain got frozen by Aokiji, and even though he was saved too, the archaeologist started to feel once more like a disgrace to her companions. Water 7 Arc After the Going Merry narrowly escaped being hit by a sea train, the crew met an old woman, Kokoro, and her granddaughter, Chimney. Kokoro gave Luffy a map to the next island, Water 7. The crew traveled to Water 7 to cash in the gold from Skypea and repair the ship, but soon found out that the Going Merry was beyond repair. Robin went shopping with Chopper, but she disappeared after a stranger wearing a mask whispered CP9 to her. Iceberg, the mayor of Water 7 and president of the Galley Law Company, was later nearly killed in an assassination attempt. He claimed that one of the assassins was Nico Robin, and assumed that the masked man who was with her was another member of the Straw Hat Pirates. An announcement was made saying that the culprits of the assassination attempt were the Straw Hats, and that everybody should go and search for them. While the crew hid from angry residents, Sanji and Chopper discovered Robin, and she told them what they had feared. She's responsible, and she wants to part ways. The Straw Hats, still missing Sanji, rushed to the Galley Law Company's headquarters where Robin and CP9, an elite group of assassins from the world government, were beginning a raid. In Iceberg's room, Robin and the mysterious man Iceberg saw before told him that they've purposefully placed the blame on the pirates. Their true aim was the Pluton blueprints passed down on him by his mentor Tom. The assassins regrouped and were revealed to be Iceberg's own allies, Blue Eno the bartender, his secretary Khalifa, and two of his shipwrights, Kaku and Rob Lucci. The Straw Hat Pirates and Polly broke into the room where they found Iceberg and CP9. Luffy and the others requested that Robin came back to the crew. She refused and told them that she could not accomplish her wish if she were to stay with them. Robin turned to leave and CP9 tried to hold the pirates back. Robin successfully escaped and Lucci showed those remaining his devil fruit power. When Robin boarded the sea train, the train was guarded. When it departed, Soge King later appeared. Soge King talked with Robin and told her that the crew knew about her reasons for leaving. After hiding under Robin's cloak, Soge King showed himself. They stumbled into the room with CP9 and met with Sanji and Frankie. Soge King produced a smokescreen. The four headed into another car, detached it, and escaped. It's not long before Blue and O pulled their car back, though. Frankie knocked down the wall so that they could escape and ended up on the enemy car. Robin willingly followed Blue Eno into his improvised door, and Soga King and Sanji were left alone. For a while, Blue Eno explained a little of Robin's past involving the Buster Call. The CP9, Frankie, and Robin finally reached Eni's lobby and disembarked. Eni's Lobby Arc Upon learning her crewmates attacked Eni's lobby, Spandam told Robin he decided to break the agreement he had with her. After hearing this, Robin had an argument with Spandam, resulting in him kicking her. Once she spotted Luffy preparing to enter the Tower of Justice, Robin angrily told him that she did not want to be saved. When Robin revealed her fears of being abandoned by the Straw Hats because of the danger of being close to her, Luffy ordered Soga King to burn the world government flag. This was Luffy's way of showing Robin that he and the Straw Hats would never abandon her. If the world government was her enemy, then they were the Straw Hats' enemy too. Luffy then encouraged Robin to say that she wants to live, which she did, shouting across Eni's lobby that she wanted to go to sea with them again. They proceeded to charge into the Tower of Justice, facing off against CP9 to rescue her. Robin, in the meantime, suffered continuous torture at Spandam's hands, with him gloating that CP9 would crush the Straw Hats, and calling the Buster Call accidentally to give them a very slim chance of surviving. With Sea Stone handcuffs on her, Robin was able to do little to resist the physical punishment Spandam delivered, and once threw his sword Funk Freed, and made her relive the painful memories of her home being annihilated, and her suffering of the past 20 years, all while revealing that the one who sent the Buster Call to O'Hara and started the painful two decades of her life of being hunted was in fact Spandam, Spandam's father. As Spandam laughed at Robin, the latter broke down in tears, reliving all that anger and frustration as she was being dragged across the Bridge of Hesitation. Passing the Ark on the bridge meant her fate would have been sealed after she passed the Gates of Justice. But Soga King quickly fired gunpowder from another tower at Spandam, injuring him before he could get past the Ark. Soga King fired several gunpowder balls at the Marine soldiers, 
but they could not fire at him as the bullets do not cover the distance between them. Robin, realizing who was helping, shed a tear of happiness, and Frankie himself reappeared with the keys they recovered fighting CP9 and freed Robin. Happy that her crewmates returned and rescued her, Robin was told by Soga King, via Frankie's Den Den Mushi, that she is indeed Luffy's friend. Robin, now free, proceeded to get revenge on Spandam by using her powers to slap him senseless with multiple arms. Despite the Buster Call being called in to deal with the Straw Hats, they all managed to escape successfully. Robin had apparently gotten over her past, as she had joined the rest in fending off the Buster Call's attacks. She also saved Luffy, who won his battle with Rob Lucci even though he was immobilized from repeated attacks to his internal organs by Lucci, by dropping him onto the Going Merry. With the Going Merry, everyone had managed to escape Ennie's lobby safely. However, after escaping, Iceberg arrived in a galley law ship just in time to pick up the Straw Hat Pirates as Merry suddenly broke apart. Luffy then gave the Going Merry a Viking funeral by burning it as the crew tearfully said goodbye. Post Ennie's Lobby Arc Two days later, Robin was resting at Water 7 with their friends and those who helped her escape Ennie's Lobby. When Vice Admiral Garp arrived, Robin was surprised to learn that he's Luffy's grandfather. Robin then learned about Luffy's connection with Shanks when Garp was talking about the Four Emperors. After Garp mentioned that Luffy's father is the revolutionary, Dragon, Robin explained more about him to Luffy since he apparently had no clue about it. Sometime after Garp left, Robin remarked on her captain's ties. Later on, a party was held at the Galley Law swimming pool. While standing alone and smiling away from the celebration, she was greeted by a familiar voice. It was Aokiji, who was hiding behind the wall she was leaning against. He told her that he let her go 20 years ago only because Saul had been his friend, but after seeing her wandering the seas as a criminal and causing suspicion, he decided that she needed to be eliminated. He said that she resembled a time bomb waiting to go off. Then Aokiji asked if she had found a home with the Straw Hats, and she replied that she had. Aokiji then questioned as to whether she will show him if Saul was right, whether the destruction of O'Hara was right or wrong. When she said she planned to, he left, telling Robin to live strong and that O'Hara is not fully destroyed and forgotten yet, presumably meaning that the memory and purpose of O'Hara lived on within her and left. Robin waited a few seconds, then ran to the other side of the wall, but all that evidenced that he was there was an X of ice. A few days later, when the newspapers released the story of the Ennies lobby incident, the Frankie family and the Galley Law shipwrights were removed from the report. Robin guessed Aokiji is behind it, but she did not tell anyone. Robin's bounty was increased to 80 million with a new picture, a very small increase in comparison to the rest of the crew, with the exception of Chopper. After the Straw Hats lured Frankie to the Thousand Sunny, Robin asked if she could use her ability to persuade Frankie to join the crew by using her powers to squeeze his testicles until he agreed to join. Even with everyone looking on in horror to what she was doing, and Luffy telling her to stop as he wanted Frankie to still be a man when he joined. She just replied that they're pirates, and that when they see treasure, they should grab it and never let it go. Thriller Bark Arc After sailing for some time on the Thousand Sunny, Robin and the rest of the crew came across a mysterious barrel floating in the ocean. Upon opening it, a flash shot up from it. Suspecting that it may be a homing beacon of some sort, Robin asked the rest of the crew to get ready. After braving a storm that mysteriously came afterwards, Robin and the rest of the crew found themselves in the presence of a ghost ship. This ship apparently belonged to a skeleton named Brooke, who through by chance initially accepted Luffy's offer to join the crew. This skeleton explained over dinner that he was once a pirate that ate the Yomi Yomi no Mi. Brooke also explained that his shadow was stolen by someone. The latter information seemed to spark an interest in Robin. Just as Brooke was about to perform before Robin and the rest of the crew, a ghost appeared and some clanking sounds were heard. These sounds were caused by the gates of the island that suddenly appeared, Thriller Bark closing. These events prompted Brooke to head to the island before Robin and the rest of the Straw Hat's eyes. With Luffy's resolve to go to the island, Robin decided to join also with the response that she likes thrills. After witnessing Frankie's present to the Straw Hats, Robin and the rest of the Straw Hats decided to look for Nami, Usopp, and Chopper who had not returned. 
However, before Robin and the rest could go to the island, they were stopped by an invisible thing. This thing licked her from bottom to top and left Robin and the rest baffled. After the Thousand Sunny got caught in what was apparently a spider web, Robin and the rest descended to the island. There they met the Cerberus, which Robin found cute. After Luffy tamed the beast, Robin and the rest met two more of the island's creatures. Robin and the rest then came across some ghosts, which she noted their difference with the rest of the other creatures on the island. She also noted the ghost's strange ability to drain out one's will, as she saw some pass through some of her traveling companions. After those who were affected by them recovered, Robin and the rest pressed forward. Robin and the rest later encountered some zombies and defeated them with a combo technique. The group then met an old man who looked like a zombie. The old man asked them to defeat Gecko Moria, who had stolen his shadow. Robin, upon hearing that name, explained to the group that Moria was a warlord of the sea with a former bounty higher than Luffy. As Robin, Frankie, and Luffy explored Hogback's mansion, they were attacked by the surprise zombies in the dining room. After Luffy captured Buhichuk, it guided them deeper into the mansion into a trap. Luffy, Frankie, and Robin are then forced to battle the general zombies. Proving to be too many and too strong, they tried to escape, but Luffy was abducted and sealed in a coffin and taken away. Before getting the chance to save him, Robin and Frankie were blocked by a giant spider named Terreran. Frankie destroyed the bridge they were on to escape from the situation, and Robin reacted by creating wings out of hands. Though she stated she could only hold them for five seconds, it was enough for Frankie to use his attack strong right to grab the entranceway from which the bridge had been attached to. As they were pulled up to the opening, Brook suddenly fell from the sky. After Brook's fall, Terreran returned his attention to Frankie and Robin once again. As Robin and Frankie fought on, Robin found herself trapped in a web formed by spider mice. Frankie and Brook combined their efforts and defeated the Terreran and freed Robin. After the battle, Brook explained to Robin and Frankie how Moria created the zombies and what their weakness is. Later, she helped Usopp and Chopper to defeat some zombies and escorted them back to the ship where they found Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji. When Luffy asked if anyone objected to Brook joining the crew, Robin smiled and said Luffy would have invited him even if they did. After explaining the situation to them, Luffy told the Straw Hats to prepare for a counterattack on Thriller Bark. Robin, along with Chopper, faced off against Dr. Hogback and zombies, Jigoro, Inupe, and Hogback's servant, Sindri, while Luffy made his way to Moria. Robin tried fighting the zombies, but they proved too strong for her. Inupe had forgotten the previous chivalry carried over from Sanji's shadow and showed no mercy to her. Robin tricks Hogback into telling them to jump out of the tower, as Chopper was able to hold down Sindri. With the zombies defeated, she and Chopper tried to finish off Hogback once and for all until they were forced to flee when Oars attacks the mansion, causing the room to collapse. Robin helped the other members of the crew fight the undead giant, Oars. After that, she was seen knocked unconscious from Oars' attack. However, she recovered quickly along with the rest of the crew and proceeded to assist in bringing Oars down with her move, Cien Fleur, Big Tree. However, Oars recovered and Gecko Moria entered Oars' belly, giving the giant greater strength than ever before. Robin attempted to stop Moria with her ability Oshenta Fleur, Quattro Mano Hold, by attempting to break Moria's neck. However, Moria escaped the attack with the help of the Doppelman, his shadow. Moria then attacked Robin, removing her shadow from her body, leaving her unconscious, as he continued to operate oars from within his stomach. She awakened some time later and helped Luffy and Brooke get to the top of Thriller Bark by sprouting legs on the walls to climb on. She then sprouted multiple arms, holding Orz's limbs in place long enough for Luffy to deliver the final blow to him. As the sun began to rise, Robin's body began to disintegrate in the sunrise. But just before her body completely vanished, her shadow returned in time for her to survive. Unfortunately, another warlord of the sea, Bartholomew Kuma, was also on Thriller Bark, just receiving orders via Zengoku from the world government to wipe out all witnesses including the Straw Hat Pirates of Gecko Moria's defeat by Monkey D. Luffy. After briefly dueling with Kuma, the Warlord gave the Straw Hats an ultimatum. Let him take Luffy, who had lost consciousness from the pain and fatigue he gained from fighting Moria and his body almost disintegrating. And the Straw Hats would be spared, as they were not as much a threat to the world government as Luffy was. 
They all refused his offer, and Kuma released his Ursus shock attack, knocking Robin, along with the rest of the Straw Hats and the Rolling Pirates, unconscious, but regained consciousness after Kuma left Thriller Bark. Thanks to her power, she sprouted her ear to eavesdrop the conversation between Sanji and the Risky Brothers and knew about Zoro's story after Ursus' shock. Later on, during the party, she was seen watching over Zoro while commenting on how nostalgic the Binx's sake song was. After that, when Brooke asked again if Luffy would honor his initial acceptance of joining the Straw Hats, Luffy replied yes. While all the other Straw Hats were shocked at how quickly he joined the crew, Robin just giggled. Once she and the rest of the crew finally left Thriller Bark, they held a toast to Brooke, their new crew member. Sabaudi Archipelago Arc Journeying further into the Sabaudi Archipelago, the Straw Hats were looking for a mechanic to coat their ship. The crew saw slavery firsthand. Robin talked about fishmen being treated as inferior in the past. When the rest of the crew arrived at the auction house to rescue Cami, Robin dropped into the auction house using her CN Fleur wing and fought the guards with the rest of the crew. Robin recognized Trafogar Law as a pirate when Luffy asked who he is. She prepared to disable Saint Shalria before she could kill Cami, but the noble was stopped by Rayleigh's burst of spirit. Robin escaped with Hachi, Rayleigh, Cami, and the rest of the crew to Shaki's ripoff bar and heard Rayleigh tell of the truth about Gold Roger's fate. Robin later questioned Rayleigh as to what the Will of D is and if they read the Rio Poneglyph, remembering what she noted Gold D. Roger writing a message in the same language. Rayleigh confirmed that they, the Roger Pirates, read the true history, but advised Robin that they may have misread it and that she herself may come to a different conclusion than they did. Rayleigh told them that they were mere pirates and had not the intellect of the scholars from O'Hara or Professor Clover, and said Roger simply had the ability to hear all things. Rayleigh seemed to be fully aware of the details of the O'Hara incident and mentioned it was a tragedy, but asked if Robin wanted to hear what he had learned from the true history, to which she had declined. Robin's first question about the will of D, however, was unanswered. Rayleigh decided to coat the Thousand Sunny free of charge, and because it would take at least three days to coat, he gave all the Straw Hats Viva cards to locate him. After the Straw Hats departed Shaki's ripoff bar, they were confronted by someone who appeared to be Bartholomew Kuma. Eventually, they were able to gain the upper hand on him, and Robin helped obtain victory by using her powers to form four huge arms to forcibly shut the mouth during a mouth blast attack, leaving a groggy before Nami and the monster trio, Sanji, Zoro, and Luffy seemingly delivered the finishing blows. Soon after, Sentomaru appears with another Kuma, revealing to be a pacifista. As they were attacked, Robin escaped with Luffy and Chopper. Sentomaru chased the group and managed to shrug off Luffy's attacks, to Robin's surprise. When Admiral Kizaru arrived and aimed for a crippled Zoro, she tried to move him away from his attack, but he just shifted his position and pinned his body down. Later, she followed Luffy and Chopper when they split up, only to be intercepted by Sentomaru who sent Luffy flying. She later carried Luffy to safety when Chopper turned into his monster point. Bartholomew Kuma also appeared on Sabaudi, teleporting the out-of-control pacifista away, and then all the Straw Hats to different locations one by one. Robin was the second to last one to be vanished when she was intercepted by Kuma while she was trying to escape. She landed on a bridge country called Tequila Wolf in the East Blue, where the enslaved inhabitants had been working on a bridge between islands for the last 700 years. She was also shown having her hands cuffed, indicating that she had to help build it. Robin asked why the bridge is being built and was told she had no need to know that. She later appeared to have escaped surveillance with a ring of stolen keys in her mouth, but apparently had yet to leave their domain. Eventually, she and the other slaves were freed by a group of revolutionaries who came to liberate them. Post-war arc. The revolutionaries revealed that they had been searching for her for 10 years because she was the only survivor from the nation who fought against the world, O'Hara. Their leader, Dragon, told them to protect her from the world government to the best of their abilities. The revolutionaries then offered Robin a meeting with Dragon. Robin declined as she did not need protection because she had her crew. Robin then rode on a carriage which was going to the end of the bridge. While passing through a construction site from 300 years ago, Robin inquired about the bridge. 
A revolutionary informed her that the construction of the bridge is an order from the world nobles. When Robin received a newspaper, she laughed and was glad that Luffy was all right. When asked if there was something interesting written, she agreed and smiled. While reading the article of Luffy infiltrating and praying at Marine Ford, she stated Roger with a smile as she had always done when her captain made an order. She changed her mind about going to Baltigo with them. She said that if she had known that there were people this kind in the world, that she would have come to them sooner. The revolutionary said that they did not know she was working under Crocodile. She responded that she was glad things worked out the way they did. Robin then had a flashback of her life on the run as a child and to the events of Ennie's lobby. When the revolutionaries invited her inside to be out of the cold, she said that as a pirate, she could not trust revolutionaries too easily, and that it would not be wise to accept an invitation to a room where she would not have an escape route. As the revolutionaries were bringing her food and warm blankets, she wondered if she could become stronger by turning herself over to the revolution with Dragon, blushing and giggling at the idea. She then realized that she has never thought of becoming stronger for someone else before now. To be continued. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Videos. Videos.